we're back in the BIOS and we're going to go for 3.3 GHz. To get there, we need to change the base clock to 165 MHz. 165 times 20 gives us 3300, or 3.3 GHz. When we made that change, the RAM, Uncore, and QPI automatically updated. Let's take a look. The RAM changed to 1322 MHz. This is below the memory's rated speed of 1333 MHz, so it's fine. The Uncore is slightly more than double the speed of the RAM, which is what we want, and the QPI is on the lowest setting available. We'll press F10 and OK to save and exit. The CPU is running at 3.3 GHz and the memory at 1322 MHz. The CPU temperature at idle is about 58 degrees Celsius. I'll run Prime95 on the large FFT setting to get the load temperature. The load temperature is 85C after 14 minutes. Last, I'll get the CPU score. The CPU score in 3D Mark 6 is 6216. The overclock is stable. I have taken notes on all the results. Let's restart and go into the BIOS. Let's try 3.4 GHz. A base clock of 170 times a multiplier of 20 gives us 3400 or 3.4 GHz. Once again, the RAM, Uncore, and QPI changed automatically. The RAM is now set faster than its rated speed of 1333 MHz. I'm going to lower the RAM speed to 1023 MHz. This will underclock the RAM well below its rated speed of 1333 MHz and rule out the RAM as being the cause of any instability. I'll change the Uncore frequency to 2045 MHz, which is twice the speed of the RAM, and the QPI is fine at 6135. I'll write these settings down, press F10, and OK to save and exit. The idle temp is 57 degrees C. The load temperature is 84 degrees C after running Prime95 for 15 minutes. The CPU score in 3D Mark 6 is 6347. So the overclock to 3.4 GHz is stable. We are back in the BIOS, so let's try 3.5 GHz. A base clock of 175 times a multiplier of 20 gives us 3500, or 3.5 GHz. Once again, the RAM, Uncore, and QPI changed automatically. The RAM changed to 1053 MHz. The next highest option is 1403 MHz, which is higher than the memory specs, so we'll leave it at 1053 MHz. The Uncore is set to 2105 MHz, which is double the RAM speed, and the QPI is set to 6316, which is the lowest possible setting. I'll write these settings down, press F10, and enter to save and exit. Let's check real temp. The CPU idle temperature is 58 degrees Celsius.
Prime 95 has been running for 13 minutes and the load temperature is 86 degrees C. The CPU score in 3D Mark 06 is 6553 and the overclock to 3.5 GHz is stable. Before we try 3.6 GHz, I'd like to see if the RAM will run faster than its rated speed of 1333 MHz. The next highest setting is 1403 MHz. The Uncore automatically updated to 2807 MHz, which is twice the speed of the RAM. This will be overclocking the RAM, which could introduce instability, so these are the only changes we will make. I'll note the change, press F10, and enter to save and exit. We didn't change the CPU overclock, so the idle temperatures shouldn't change. In Prime 95, we're going to choose the blend setting, which will stress the RAM. This is a different test, so the load temperatures may be a little different. Prime 95 has been running for around 14 minutes without an error showing up, the system freezing or restarting, so the RAM appears stable. However, Prime 95 is mostly intended to stress the CPU, not the RAM. A better test we can run is called Burn In Test. You can download it from www.passmark.com. We'll click Download, and it comes in both Standard and Pro versions, and 32-bit and 64-bit versions of each. We'll download the Pro 32-bit version. The Pro version has the most options for testing. There's a 30-day trial, which is plenty of time to test one system. Just run the EXE once it downloads and install it. We've already installed it on this system, so I'll launch it. To test the RAM, we need to click this down arrow and choose RAM. If you've installed the standard version, you can get to the same test by clicking Quick Tests and RAM. Click the green arrow and OK to start the test. If there are any errors, they will be shown here. Burn in test has a few CPU tests we can use in addition to Prime 95 to test for stability. The test is passed, so the RAM is stable at 1403 MHz. If the test failed, we could either increase the voltage going to the RAM or increase the RAM's timings. We will show how to do this in Lesson 5. Next, we'll try to get the CPU to 3.6 GHz. A base clock of 180 times a multiplier of 20 gives us 3600 or 3.6 GHz. Once again, the RAM, Uncore, and QPI changed automatically. The RAM changed to 1443 MHz. Since we are trying a higher CPU overclock, I'll change that to 1083 MHz to rule out the RAM as being a cause of any instability. I'll change the Uncore to 2165 MHz, which is twice the RAM speed, and the QPI is at its lowest possible setting. I'll make note of the changes, press F10, and enter to save and exit. Let's check real temp. The idle temperature is 57 degrees Celsius. Prime 95 has been running for about 13 minutes and the load temperature is 87 degrees Celsius.
the CPU score in 3D Mark 06 is 6724, and the overclock at 3.6 GHz is stable. Let's try to get the CPU to 3.7 GHz. A base clock of 185 times a multiplier of 20 gives us 3700, or 3.7 GHz. Once again, the RAM on Core and QPI changed automatically. The RAM changed to 1113 MHz, which is fine. The Uncore is 2226 MHz, which is twice the speed of the RAM, and the QPI is at its lowest possible setting. I'll make note of the settings, press F10, and enter to save and exit. Let's check real temp. The idle temperature is 57 degrees C. I'll start Prime 95 on the large FFT setting. The computer just restarted itself. Prime 95 was running for a little over a minute, and the temperature was in the low 80s. The computer restarting itself is a definite sign of an unstable overclock. Since every system is different, your computer may become unstable at a lower or a higher overclock. In order to stabilize the overclock, we need to increase the voltage to the CPU cores using the CPU voltage setting. We may also need to increase the voltage to the CPU PLL and QPI. However, we want to be methodical and only change one setting at a time. I'm going to increase the CPU voltage to 1.225 volts and then check for stability. I'll press F10 and OK to save and exit. I'll start up real temp to keep an eye on the temperatures. The idle temperature is around 60 degrees Celsius. And I'll start Prime 95 on the large FFT setting, just like before. The temperatures at load are now going over 90 degrees Celsius, which is dangerous over long periods. When you increase the voltage, the temperatures will increase much more quickly than with frequency increases. The computer restarted again. Prime 95 had been running for about 4 minutes, and the temperatures were in the low 90s. We need more voltage to keep the system stable at 3.6 GHz. I'm going to increase the QPI voltage to 1.225 volts as well, and then test for stability. F10 and OK. I'll run the same test in Prime 95. It restarted again. Prime 95 was running for a little over 6 minutes, and the temperature was around 92 degrees C. Next, I'll increase the CPU PLL voltage to 1.88 volts, and test for stability again. I'll run the same large FFTs test in Prime 95. and the system restarted again. I'll press delete to go into the setup. I'm going to increase the CPU voltage further to 1.25 volts. The motherboard is showing this setting in yellow, meaning caution. If I use the plus key to increase it further, 
it will eventually change to a darker color and then finally to red, meaning don't go there. I'll set it to 1.25 volts and test again. I'll open up real temp and the idle temperatures are now 62 degrees C. I'll run the large FFT setting in prime 95. The load temperature is around 97 C and the individual cores are spiking over 100. Prime 95 has been running for almost 20 minutes though which is a good sign of a stable overclock. I'm going to close Prime95 and open Burn-In Test. I'm going to use one of its CPU tests, the CPU coverage, for more verification of a stable overclock. It passed. I'll close down burn in test and I'll run 3D Mark 06 for more confirmation of a stable overclock and to get the CPU score. The CPU score is 6861. The system is stable at 3.7 GHz with the voltage increases. However, these voltage increases have taken the CPU's temperatures above the recommended levels. In the next lesson, we will replace the stock Intel CPU cooler with a third-party cooler to improve the CPU's cooling. We will then attempt to overclock the CPU to 3.8 GHz.